Hello everyone, good day. We are the group 8 and we're going to tackle about the good life. Leading a life that leverates you is what the happy life includes. A life that satisfies and fulfills you, bringing happiness, joy, and a sense of purpose to your existence. A good life is one in which normal responsibilities are not the main focus. Rather, it adds value and contributes to the betterment of the world. And these are the lesson objectives of this topic. First, examine what is meant by a good life. Second, identify how humans attempt to attain what is deemed to be a good life. And lastly, recognize possibilities available to human beings to attain the good life. And based on these objectives, this report aims to know how Alder's philosophy believe on the real situation of our world and how to attain in a good life. Plato and Aristotle embarked on a different approach in figuring out reality. Plato thought that things in this world are not real and are only copies of the real in the world of forms. Change is so perplexing that it can only make sense if there are two realities, the world of forms and the world of matter. It's said that Plato defines a good life as one that ensures a person's well-being, or what we call the eudaimonia. A good spiritual state can secure one's well-being. A good soul condition is either a result of having a good soul or doing what is good for the soul. In the world of matter, things are changing and impermanent. Or it says that things are constituted of this, an intrinsically determinable principle whose opposite and correlative is form. Matter is also opposed to spirit as a form of substance. And in the world of forms, the entities are the only copies of the ideals and the models and the forms are the only real entities. And according to Plato, he believes that the world of forms is both transcendent to our own world, which the world of substances, and the essential ground of realities. Forms are the purest of all things, as they are superior to matter. Forms aren't only for the mind, but they're also for the body. Like for example, the real and the strictest sins of the world. Aristotle forwarded the idea that there is no reality over and above what the senses can perceive. As such, it is only by observation of the external world that can truly understand what reality is all about. Change is a process that is inherent in things. Aristotle also declares that even human beings are potentialities who aspire for their actuality. Every action that emanates from a human person is a function of the purpose telos that the person has. According to Aristotle, every human person aspires for an end. This end is happiness or human flourishing. He also claims that happiness is the be-all and end of all everything that we do. He also believes that human flourishing is a kind of contentment in knowing that one is getting the best out of life. Happiness as the goal of a good life. In the 18th century, John Stuart Mill declared the greatest happiness principle by saying that an action is a right as far as it maximizes the attainment of happiness for the greatest number of people. At that time, when people were skeptical about claims on the metaphysical people could not make sense of the human flourishing that Aristotle talked about in the days of Old Mill said that individual happiness of each individual should be prioritized and collectively dictates the kind of action that should be endorsed. Materialism in terms of human flourishing matters is what makes us attain happiness. We see this at work with most people who cling to material wealth as a primary source of the meaning of their existence. Materialism The first materialists were the atomists in ancient Greece. Democritus and Leucippus lead a school whose primary belief is that the world is made up of and is controlled by the tiny invisible units in the world called atomos or seeds. For Democritus and his disciples, the world, including human beings, is made up of matter. In terms of human flourishing, matter is what makes 
as attain happiness. As what you can see in the picture, this is all the example of materialism. Hedonism. The hedonist for their past see the end goal of life in acquiring pleasure. Life is about obtaining and indulging in pleasure because life is limited. The mantra of this school of thought is the famous eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. To simplify this, hedonism is a constant quest for pleasure and satisfaction. For example, you've eaten too much candy, so the possible results would be either you get stomach ache or toothache. They believe that pleasure is the highest good in life. Stoicism The idea that to generate happiness, one must learn to distance oneself and be apathetic. For the Stoics, happiness can only be attained by careful practice of apathy. When we say Stoic, it is being calm and almost without any emotions or feelings. Being a stoic, just accept whatever happens and calmly go with the flow. The ultimate basis of happiness for theists is the communion with God. The world we are in is just only temporary reality where we have to maneuver around while waiting for the ultimate return to the hands of God. The definition speaks for itself. These are the people who strongly believe in God and other supreme beings exist. Examples are the Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, and etc. Humanism, the freedom of man to carve his own destiny and to legislate his own laws, free from the shackles of a God that monitors and controls. Humanists see themselves not merely as the stewards of the creation, but as individuals who are in control of themselves and the world outside them. So, humanism is a progressive philosophy of life that without theism or other supernatural beliefs, affirms our ability and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good. It is not theistic and it, is, and it does not accept supernatural views of reality. In other words, humanism is a belief that human needs and values are more important than religious beliefs or the needs and desires of humans. An example of humanism is the belief that the person creates their own set of ethics. Another example of humanism is planting vegetables in gardens beds. So this is a photo about humanism. Humanism in a nutshell. First is putting human beings and other living things at the center of your moral outlook. Second, sec Seeing the world as a natural place and looking to science and reason to make sense of it. Third, promoting and supporting human flourishing across all the frontiers and championing human rights for everyone. That's all, thank you. It's a quiz time! And now we provide a short quiz for all of you. Just keep answering everyone. Have a nice day!